Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 6.5. It's going to be two separate videos. And we're dealing with solving linear inequalities. Now, we've dealt with linear equations. And this is an example of our uh, general line linear equation. We have ax plus b equals c. But when we deal with inequalities, we introduce a new symbol, or symbols, I should say where we have ax plus b is less than c. Now, that symbol could be greater than, it could be less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And we use these symbols when we're looking for a range of values. Um, you know, maybe we want to find values that fall between some, um, some other values. So we use these symbols, uh, and we're going to explore that in these next two videos. Now, this here is an equation. It says x equals 5. There's only one statement that will make this true, and that's if, if the x value is the value 5. 5 equals 5 is the only true statement. Now, if we were to graph that on a number line, we could use a closed dot, because this is a point. It is a single value on the number line. But what if this was an inequality, a greater than or less than symbol? Well, let's take a look over here. We have x is greater than 5. Well, when it comes to this statement, you know, we don't have to do any algebra to it. It's already uh, in a statement that we can read, x is greater than 5. There's three ways that we need to display our answer. Now, the first one is set notation. Set notation is essentially taking this value here, which is called algebraic notation, and making it official. We put it in braces. These, these uh, symbols are braces. And we put x such that x is greater than 5. This symbol here, x with the line, says that x such that x is greater than 5. It's uh, kind of an old nomenclature, an old style of speaking, x such that x. You know, Generally, we don't uh, do that anymore. But it's still. Uh, standard to write it in set notation like this. And you will be asked to do that. Uh, graphical notation, well, that's basically taking this uh, algebraic expression, x is greater than 5, and putting it on a number line. So since we have a number line with no numbers on it, we can denote our own. If I say, OK, well, if this is 0, then we'll call this value 5. And we know the values in between. It says x is greater than 5. Well, what I'm going to do is, I'm, because it does not include the value 5, it's just x is greater than 5, I'm going to use a parenthesis. And we'll explain this a little bit more in detail shortly. Any value to the right of 5 is greater than 5. So this is a graphical illustration that shows that the values we're looking at will be greater than 5, just like the set notation says. Then we have interval notation. Now, interval notation. I use that same parenthesis, which we'll describe in detail. And this number line and my arrow, any value greater than 5, would continue on to positive infinity. So what interval notation says is that the values I'm looking at go from 5 to infinity, any value greater than 5. And this says the same thing. So all three different ways to represent this x greater than 5 are written like this. And we'll explore interval notation and how we apply it to a graphical notation as well. So let's uh, look at some of the main points that we have to understand for interval notation. The first thing we have to realize in interval notation is it's always written from least to greatest, left to right. Just like we read a book and our number line goes from least to greatest, left to right. So when we write intervals, they have to be least to greatest, left to right. One thing you should always pay attention to. Now, we're going to use parentheses. And what the parentheses means in interval notation is that it does not include the endpoints. In that last example, x was greater than 5. It was not equal to. So we used a parentheses because it didn't include that endpoint. If it does include an endpoint, when we use the symbols such as greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, these equal to says it will include an endpoint. We use a, a bracket. So brackets include the endpoints. That's what they mean. 
Now, when we're dealing with infinity, you'll notice in that last example for that interval notation, I had 5 comma infinity. I used a parenthesis. Because parentheses, just like they say here, it does not include endpoints, well, we cannot include an infinite number of items. If we had a box like our bracket shows, we couldn't put an infinite number of items into a box. It would overflow. So we use a parenthesis to always enclose infinity. Whether it's negative infinity or positive infinity, always use a parenthesis. Okay? Now, when we do have an interval and it has the brackets on either side, we call that a closed interval because it includes both endpoints. It's closed off. It makes a box, and it has a specific number of items in it. An open interval is where we do not have uh, endpoints that are included. And we see that here. We've seen that in the, our example. All right? Neither of these endpoints can be included. So this would be considered an open interval. Now, sometimes we'll have one uh, endpoint that's not included and one that is included, or vice versa. This one's included and that one wouldn't be. And we'll see both cases. We call that a half open or half closed. You can use either term, a half open interval or a half closed interval. So watch for these and understand that the bracket and the parentheses have two different meanings. This one's going to include the point, and we'll use that with greater than or less than and equal to. And this we'll just use for greater than or less than. All right, let's look at some examples where we can uh, display different uh, notations. Set notation is given here. We have x such that x is less than 9. If I wanted to graph that, well, if uh, let's say, since we can make our own scale here, I'm going to say this value right here would be 9. And we understand that the values to the left of 9, because of our number line, are going to be less than. And the values to the right will be greater than. It's always from least to greatest. So <clears throat> this says x is less than 9, x such that x is less than 9. x less than 9 says, OK, it doesn't include the value because it's only less than. So I'm going to use a parenthesis. Now, because x is less than, that's to the left. So my parentheses will open to the left. And then I can draw an arrow, or I could shade it in. Uh, but this indicates that any value to the left of 9 on our number line is the value that x can be. Now, if I'm going to write this in uh, interval notation, I'm going to use this symbol again on the value 9. And where is that arrow going to? Well, if we think about it, it's a number line. It continues on forever. But in this direction, we say it goes to negative infinity. And I used a parenthesis because we cannot include an infinite number of items into a box. So we use a parenthesis. So our interval notation is from negative infinity up to the value 9, but not including, are the solutions that make that a true statement, any value less than 9. Now here we have x is greater than or equal to 9. This is our next example. And if I put 9 on the number line here, x is greater than or equal to. So I'm going to use a bracket because I can include the value 9. Because x is greater, that's going to be any value to the right. So I'm going to show an arrow that goes to the right. And it has that arrow because it would continue on. So how do I write that in interval notation? Well, since I include the value, I'm going to use a bracket. It includes the value 9 because it could be equal to. And then that arrow continues on to positive infinity. Now I have to remember a parenthesis because I cannot put an infinite number of items into a box. All right, here we have uh, something that we'll get more familiar with. This is called a compound inequality. And if we just uh, remove the set notation for a moment, it says negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 4. When I see this, I should conjure up the idea or think about it and say, well, x is in between these two values. And notice it goes from least to greatest, negative 2 is less than 4. So it goes from the least to the greatest. And x lies somewhere in between there. 
And set notation is just x such that negative 2 is less than x, x is less than or equal to 4. So since I have two values, I'm going to put them on the number line. If I say, well, this is negative 2, then 4 would be somewhere over here. Maybe, maybe I put in a 0 just as a reference point. So if we look at this, negative 2 is less than x. Here, it doesn't include it. It's only less than. So I'm going to put a parenthesis. If we look at this, negative 2 is less than x. So negative 2 would be to the left of x. It's less than. And then we, as we read it, x is less than or equal to 4. Well, it can equal, so I'm going to use a bracket. And x is less than or equal to 4. That would make it go this way. But it has to be in between the values negative 2 and 4. And we can see that in the set notation, x is in between those two values. Now, once we've written it or put it on the graph with our parentheses at negative 2 and our bracket at 4, we can transfer that into interval notation. I have a parentheses at negative 2. And then when I get to 4, it includes that value. So let's just review for a moment. This is an open interval. This is a half open or half closed interval. And so is this. It's half open because this end is open, but this end is closed. All right, <clears throat> let's look at sometimes when we're working with inequalities, we find out, well, that any value will work. Um, so we have set notation x such that x is any real number. And that's what that actually translates to. It's a series of symbols. But this symbol here means all real numbers. How do we put that on the graph? Well, our graph of a number line includes all the real values. It has values to the right, which are positive. Values to the left of 0 are negative. We want to include them all. Well, essentially, all we have to do is re-highlight our number line, indicate that, hey, this is going to follow the number line. It is the entire number line. How do I represent that in uh, it, interval notation? Well, the number line goes from negative infinity, and then it continues on to positive infinity from least to greatest. We always write our intervals from least to greatest. Well, negative values are less than positive values. And we have an open interval because we have parentheses on either side. Now, in the example before that one, we saw what I called an and statement, which uh, we had a compound inequality. This is an or statement. This says we can have one value or another, not both at the same time. It says x such that x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 4. So we have these two values. I'm going to put them on the number line. And uh, this statement, I take one at a time here. It says x is less than negative 2. Well, it does not include it, so I use a parenthesis. And because it's less than, it's to the left. So it would be any value to the left of oh, negative 2. Here we have x is greater than 4. Well, that would be any value to the right because it's greater than. And I use a parenthesis because it's not equal. Any value to the right of 4 is going to be greater than 4. And that's what our statement says. So we can see here we have a piece of the graph that goes to the left, and we have a piece of it that goes to the right. There are two separate intervals. It is one or the other. So when I write that in interval notation, I know that this arrow goes off to negative infinity, and then it gets to negative 2, but it doesn't include it. So I have parentheses. This interval here starts at 4, but does not include it. And then it continues on to positive infinity. And we know we can't put infinity into a bracket. Now, there's one more thing I have to do. Because I have more than one interval, and it was an or statement and something we'll get familiar with as we go on, we have to use this symbol. And this symbol, it looks like a u. And it actually stands for the union of two intervals. This interval or this interval will make one or the other statement true. So if I pick a value from this one, it makes this one true. If I pick a value from this, it makes this true. So it makes one or the other true. All right, so that is our introduction to set notation, graphical notation, and interval notation. Uh, watch 
part two of section 6.5, and you'll actually see some examples of how we utilize all three notations in solving inequalities. Thank you for watching.